everyone. Honorable Dr. Justice E.Y. Chachuti, Justice of India. Honorable Mr. Justice S. Abdul Nazi, Judge Supreme Court and Mr. R. Vinkatamani Lani, Attorney General for India to the dais. May I request Mr. Sadbir Singh Pilania, Member Executive, to kindly present a bouquet to Honorable Dr. Justice D.Y. Chancho, Chief Justice of India. May I request Mr. Kumar Gaurav, Member Executive, to kindly present a bouquet to Honorable Mr. Justice S. Nabdul Nazi, Judge Supreme Court. May I request Mr. Vikas Pawa, Senior Advocate and Senior Member Executive to kindly present a bouquet to Mr. R. Venkatramani Lani, Attorney General for India. May I request Mr. Rashna Shivasa, Senior Advocate and Senior Member Executive to kindly present a bouquet to Mrs. Abdul Nazir. Honorable Dr. Justice D.Y. Chanchur, Chief Justice of India. Honorable Mr. Justice S. Abdul Nazir, Judge Supreme Court. Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court, family members of uh, Justice Abdul Nazir, ma'am and other family members, Mr. R. Venkatramani, Learning Attorney General for India, Mr. Tushar Mehta, Learning Solicitor General of India, Sri Vikas Singh, President SCBA, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Vice President SCBA, Mr. Manoj Mishra, President Skora, Mr. Parikh, former President, Ms. Priya Ingorani, Mr. K.C. Kaushik, Mr. Vikran Chadha, former Secretary, Senior Advocates and my fellow colleagues at the bar, a very good evening to you all. Today we have gathered here to bid farewell to Honorable Mr. Justice S. Abdul Nazir, Judge Supreme Court. 
He was appointed as a judge of Karnataka High Court on 12th of May 2003 and as a judge of Supreme Court on 17th of February 2017. He was someone who always conducted the court with a smile and appearing in his court was a pleasure as the <coughs> atmosphere was always very light in his court. In his tenure of around six years, he gave numerous, numerous landmark judgments. He was part of the constitution bench judgment in K.S. Puttaswamy vs. Union of India, reported in 2017 10 SCC 1, which held that right to privacy is a fundamental right, and was also part of the constitution bench in M. Siddiqui vs. Suresh Das, reported in 2021 SCC 1, related to Ayodhya title dispute. He was also part of the constitution bench in J. Shri Lakshman Rao Patel vs. State of Maharashtra, reported in 2021 8 SCC 1 in Maratha Reservation case and was also part of the constitution bench in the judgment delivered recently in demonetization case. I also take this opportunity to thank Honorable Dr. Justice D. Y. Chanchu, Chief Justice of India and Honorable Judges Committee of Honorable Mr. Justice B. R. Gawai, Honorable Mr. Justice Surekant and Honorable Mr. Justice J. K. Maheshwari for agreeing for a demand to build cubicles in three big halls in D Block Additional Building Complex Supreme Court. And lawyers will get cubicles there who are on the waiting list of chamber allotment. We also wish to thank Honorable CJ for the electronic Supreme Court reports project wherein all the soft copies of the SCR updated are available on the Supreme Court website with an option for search also free of cost and would be very beneficial for the members of the bar and especially for the younger members of the bar. As I see a lot of youngsters sitting over here. May I now request Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Senior Advocate, Vice President SCBA to kindly give his welcome address. Honorable Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, the Chief Justice of India, Honorable Justice Najir, and family members of Honorable Justice Najir, the family members of Honorable Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, Honorable Judges, Supreme Court of India, Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, Justice Khanna, Justice Honorable Justice Gawai, Justice Rastogi, Justice Nagratna, Justice Bela Trivedi, Justice Dhulia, the Honorable Justice J.K. Maheshwari, Justice Oka, Justice uh, Deepankar Datta, and other judges, Justice Bikram Nath, and Honorable Justice Ashok Bhushan, Justice Narsimha, Honorable Mr. P.H. Parekh, the sixth time president of SCBA, and ten times president of ISCORA, R. Benkat Ramni, Attorney General for India, Mr. Tusar Mehta, Solicitor General of India, Bikas Singh and Rahul Kosik, President and Secretary, SCBA, Rohit Pandey, Yugandra, Ripak Kansal, and Manoj Mishraji, President Iskora, and members of the bar. Honorable Justice Najir was referred today by Mr. Hegde, the senior advocate, that he belongs to minority who speaks Tulu language. Justice Nazir has a village background, and after primary education, he came to Mangalore where he did law, and thereafter, he started practicing there, especially in tax side at Mangalore District Court. Honorable Justice Nazir has five brothers and one sister. Honorable Justice Najir was initially working with K.S. Kasim, who was, happens to be his father-in-law, and thereafter two other seniors, Tarak Ramji and Mr. Vijay Kumar. He is a very soft-spoken, a man of simple living, and a wonderful person. Honorable Justice Najir, he is a man of million dollar smile, but if any lawyer goes with his smile, he will get into trouble. Honorable Justice Najir himself narrated about one incident in which a lawyer in Bangalore High Court, he appeared, he argued, Honorable Justice Najir smiled and he said something he did not listen properly. And next day he came and mentioned that this order says that matter was dismissed. So. Thy smile is there, and he is a man who always 
make the environment present. He is a very well-behaved person. He always respected his seniors. He also respected the bar. In the morning, I said that he is the man who is the real 2020 player. It means that he was 20 years in the bar and 20 years in the bench. And I, we are here to give him all the best wishes for his the next inning, which may be one day or five day cricket. So your best part is about to come. And I hope that almost after six years as Supreme Court judge, you must have decided that how to serve the community and you are the person who will never keep yourself in a way that you do not serve the society and the country. In the words of Honorable Justice D.Y. Chanchud, who referred him the real statesman, the such judgments as Ayodhya, even in many other judgments, what Lord Sip has delivered and shown the strength that gives a special status to Lordship in the minds of our lawyers. Bar is the best judge, Lordship, for the judges because when they retire, they start judging them. Today, the strength here and also the strength there in the courtroom one, they all were appreciative to your, your behavior and your conduct. Lordship is, was originally the third judge who came directly from High Court without becoming Chief Justice to Supreme Court judge. Now we have eight more. And all of them, they, it shows that what kind of persons they are. They are identified. They show their conduct, their acumen, and that is the basis of coming directly to this honorable court. Lordship was appearing earlier for Bangalore Development Authority prior to becoming judge. When the SCORA was conducting the function on second, Lordship referred one thing that today is the Ekadasi Ganga Ekadasi. He has that kind of like Panchang knowledge also that shows. Otherwise, many of us we do not know that today is Ganga Ekadasi. Lordship said, so he's so humble, he said that I did not know that I will become Supreme Court judge. I never expected. That shows his humbleness. Lordship is very good to his juniors, his interns. His, all the interns today I was speaking, they told that, especially when Lordship lost his mother in the COVID, next day when he came back from the hometown, he asked them that whether they are all right, he called everyone. And thereafter, he asked his juniors that whether you are getting proper food. And all the juniors were given food from the honorable Lordship. And obviously, Lordship is fond of biryani and fish curry. So all these nice food, they all juniors have got. Lordship has never scolded anyone. Normally, the juniors, they complain that the senior is sometimes harsh and sometimes he is not appropriately behaving, but Lordship, all the juniors, they are fond of him. They are fond of his good behavior. Honorable Lordship is the fond of mediation. And I tell Lordship that we have 250 mediators now in the Supreme Court, thanks to Honorable Justice Sanjay Kishan Call and MCPC, that we have 250 mediators trained and now they are going to be impaneled. In, in the list of them, even our earlier EC, there were 16 members of my EC. Even in this EC, there are nine members, sister and wife of Rahul Kausik, they were also part of that mediation training program. So you see the success, every application was entertained. We published this on the website. Whoever applied, they all were accommodated, thanks to Honorable Justice Sanjay Kishan Call for such a gracious uh, attitude towards the bar. Once Lordship was addressing a function where many juniors of Karnataka, they were present, many of them who thought that their English is not that good. And whether that English will come in the way of their success, Lordship referred and said that don't phase if you cannot speak English. Even as a judge, we are learning, we are still learning. So this process continues. 
and you all will achieve success. This is the great word, this is the great motivation. When a judge of Supreme Court says that your language is not a bar and you will achieve all the success if you upgrade yourself, if you continue to study. Lordship, actually, whenever we say, yesterday is this, uh, another quote was there, this from Mr. Ajaj Makbul. He referred Lordship and he said that, Khuda mahfooj rakhe aapko tino balao se. Hakimo se, wakilo se, aur hasino ki nigaho se. Lordship objected, he said that, why hakimo se? He is the witty person. If you are in his company, you will smile. You will be actually feel happy that Lordship is actually taking care of everyone. Lordship is fond of cats. He has two pets as a cat. His granddaughter, Dua, is the favorite child with whom Lordship enjoys his evening. One word he always remembered from his father, that keep your face always towards the sunshine and shadow will fall behind always. I welcome everyone, and I especially, Madam Samira, Akil, and daughter Irfana, and all other family members, and honorable judges and senior members of the bar, and interns, a large number of interns are present here. It's really very good that you all came. You are witnessing this function. I welcome each one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pradeep, sir. May I now request Mr. R. Venkatamani, Learning Attorney General for India, to kindly deliver his address. To compress uh, in a short span of time the lifetime of honorable judges who adorn this court, great institution. I think we'll always be doing great injustice. We still try to do that. And sometimes with a certain amount of reluctance, because you do not really know how a judge who has traveled all the way in her, her, his career has made a world of difference to administration of justice. And we only catch a few glimpses of life's achievements from chronicles spread here and there. And so you always feel that when you talk about in these gatherings, I think uh, I must say that judges never leave the court and they leave without leaving. So how do we talk about a judge who is always enduring in the court? I travel uh, to a faraway distance in Karnataka, a place called Karkala, from where Justice Nazir was born, a beautiful and a scenic place. And very near to that is a place called Murbudri, from where he graduated, a very famous Jain institution. I keep traveling along those places. And I know that how places such as this could have never produced anybody with an unfading smile. So Ansaji is a great treasure of Justice Nazir. And when I traveled those places and I came to know that he sailed from that place, I tried to connect the beauty of the place with the beauty of his mind. I said, I salute you, said, with the beauty of your mind, whatever I've experienced you in this court, during my appearances before you. And uh, I recollect one case where I thought I have been on a very high intellectual side, presenting persuasive arguments and precedence and logic. And that was the case from Bangalore, uh, a city which prides itself both on its garden city and also its lakes. So the Belandur Lake was on fire. So the Various lakes in Bangalore have been subjected to depredations of urban development and so on and so forth. So in one of the cases I traveled from uh, Green Tribunal to Supreme Court, I was appearing for the developer, and I thought um, I looked into all possible persuasive arguments 
in various statutes and constitutional law. And at the end of the day, I thought I had persevered just as Nazir and the bench suit heard the matter. But somewhere at the bottom of my heart, I thought my intuition told me that you are not going to make the mark. Then I realized that beyond all these perseverations of law precedence and logic, a judge intuitively reaches the core of a matter, particularly when it concerns the larger dimensions of the nation and the country and people. So when the judgment came, I thought, yes, I proved to be wrong. Then the Belandur Lake was saved, and much more has been done for the Great Lake, for the city of Bangalore, following that judgment. Sir, I salute you once again for the wonderful judgment. And I know you, you had your career chiseled in the chambers of Tarakaram, a well-known senior in Bangalore, who was um, in whose chamber several juniors have developed. And, uh, and I found out Tarakaram was a great, uh, you know, musician. And he was, uh, addict, and he was probably part of a music academy, Ram Seva Samiti. And I thought, how beautifully Nazir would have groomed in his chamber and then probably gathered all those wonderful insights of the great diversity of our country. And I've seen it in some of his recent speeches. And therefore, all that I can say today is that with an, a smile, an endearing and an unfading smile, which conceals and doesn't disclose a very strong mind and a great heart, a strong mind which resists a strong mind which resists wrong perceptions in the court. And I'm sure, sir, while walking out of this court and leaving us with your fond memories in company, I'm sure, well, Leonard Chen mentioned about the mediation issue, I'm sure in days to come, in the bar, we'll be able to fall back upon great minds like you to make more and more qualitative contributions to administration of justice, more particularly in the arena of mediation. I'm sure you will best fit the bill with your, all those compartments of life and mind you have acquired. So on behalf of the Bar Association, on behalf of my friends here, on behalf of the honorable judges, I thank you for being with us and having been with us for the past six years on the bench and have added immense beauty and wealth to this great institution. Thank you so much, sir. Good day to all of you. Thank you, sir. May I now request Mr. Vikas Singh, President SCBA, to kindly deliver his address. Honorable the Chief Justice of India, Dr. D.Y. Chandrachud, Honorable Judges of this Court, the Learned Attorney General for India, Shri R. Venkat Ramani, Shri Tushar Mehta, who was here today, but unfortunately, because of his ill health, had to leave, Law Officers of the Government of India, Justice Abdul Nazir, our very fond judge who's retiring today, members of the family of Justice Nazir, members of the Executive Committee of SCBA, President of SCORA, Shri Manoj Mishra, members of the Executive Committee of SCORA, members of the bar, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a sad moment for the bar when one of the popular judges of this court retires. I have always felt that this age is not an age for retirement because the judge probably at it, is at his best in his productive capacity and his, his uh, acumen, his uh, intellect, his experience which he has gained over the years are lost abruptly at this age which is definitely not good for the system and I feel that something should be done in future to ensure that our judges can work much longer and give more years to the institution and to the country. Justice Nazir comes from a very humble background. He was from a rural area. 
he has had a huge struggle in his life he lost his father when he was still studying even financially the the family was not in very good position and for him to rise to where he has risen is a great tribute to his hard work and his sincerity he is a first generation lawyer and accordingly the first question that comes to anyone's mind is that how was he inspired to be a lawyer in a, in those days when he became a lawyer the legal profession was not that sought after as it is now today he was impressed by a personality in his taluka that is mr vijay kumar who was a senior advocate there who was also a public figure who used to be speaking everywhere so being impressed with that personality he always visualized himself to be a lawyer and to come to that level of mr vijay kumar or to aspire to become a good lawyer like him it is that motivation which made him study law and when he finished his law because the inspiration was mr vijay kumar he was desperate to somehow join his office and he was lucky to get an introduction by one of mr vijay kumar's client and mr vijay kumar took him readily in his fold so he played a very important role in justice nazir being with us today and joining the legal profession immediately thereafter he within one year thereafter he moved to bangalore he joined the office of his father in law shri k s kasmi kasim sorry k s kasim and uh, he worked with him for some time and then he joined the illustrious chambers of mr v krishna murthy and mr v tarak tarak takaram for 5 6 years he worked within that other chamber and then he became independent and he had a roaring practice in the bangalore high court it is a credit to the collegium system that he was picked up by our collegium and the person who considered him for elevation was none other than our own justice ravindran who also came later to this court justice ravindran was fourth in seniority there but the first three judges were from outside so he was the senior most local judge in the high court and he decided to elevate justice nazir or make a recommendation for his elevation when justice nazir was only 43 years of age and that kind of recognition being given at such a young age speaks volumes about the kind of work that justice nazir was doing and the kind of practice he had in karnataka and that the collegium system also sometimes is doing good job i have my own reservation to the collegium system but this is one clear great example of our collegium system working very efficiently of picking somebody who has no backing who is a first generation lawyer and who is also from the minority community his name was cleared for his name kept was kept pending till he turned 45 and it was cleared in 2003 and he was elevated again i give credit to the collegium system that in when justice keher decided to elevate justice nazir he was the fourth senior judge of the high court and although people say that he was elevated because he was from the minority community even from the minority community he was the fourth senior most in the all india seniority so to be picked up by justice keher's collegium for him to be elevated to the supreme court to give him a tenure of 6 years again speaks volumes of how the collegium system is functioning to bring in good people to this court the big moment for justice nazir came in my view when he was hearing the ayodhya matter he was the only minority judge in supreme court 
and because being the only minority judge he had to be part of that bench. So there was an expectation that as a member of the five judges bench which heard the matter he will give definitely a separate opinion whether concurring or not but he will give a separate opinion. But he is a true embodiment of secularism in this country. He not only agreed to give a unanimous verdict without naming who was who wrote that judgment, being part of that judgment. <laughs> he agreed with the majority view. And that judgment shows his true nature because his attitude is that nation first, him as a judge second and him as an individual last in priority. Because that is what is expected of any judge when he takes the oath as provided in our constitution. To take look at nation as first, you are, you are an Indian. You have to look at the large country as that is India and you have to serve the institution as a true Indian. Justice Nazir studied in this school in Jain High School in Mubidare and then Dharmatala Law College and in these last 40 years he has made it a point to remain in touch both with the school as well as with the college by visiting the college at least once or twice every year and the school also almost every year. As the lawyer of the Bangalore Development Authority, he won a very big case for the authority. The authority in recognition of that because that case was very important for them, they wanted to allot a plot for him under the discretionary quota. Justice Nazir refused to accept any plot under the discretionary quota. That is the character of Justice Nazir. And that speaks volumes of a person who is not even a judge to not accept something out of turn if he did not deserve it. Justice Nazir has been a member of several important judgments of this court. And I on behalf of the association would like to wish him all the very best for his future life. He is a great fan of cricket, he likes to watch cricket, he will get more time to watch all your matches sir now. He will get more time to spend with his family in Bangalore because he intends to shift to Bangalore. He does not want to do anything as such but of course he does not mind once in, one, or in arbitration once in a while. But the arbitration that he intends to do is not as a sort of a full time profession but more to keep himself busy and that also speaks the volumes of the man that he has served an institution. He is now wanting to take a proper retirement with his family and do all things which are dear to him. We wish him all the very best in his next innings in life. Thank you. Thank you Vikas sir. It is very encouraging to know that from a humble background as a first generation lawyer just with his sheer hard work he could reach up to this and was a Supreme Court judge for a period of 6 years and the principles he kept as a lawyer also. May I now request Honorable Dr. Justice D.Y. Chanchu, Chief Justice of India to kindly leave his address. My dear brother and noble friend, Honorable Justice S. Abdul Nazir, Mrs. Nazir, members of his family, including his daughter Irfana and his friends, my very distinguished colleagues, brothers and sisters on the bench, Mr. R. Venkatramani, the learned Attorney General for India. The Solicitor General was here a short while ago, but he had to leave because he is recovering. The President and Vice President of the Supreme Court Bar Association, Mr. Vikas Singh, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Mr. Rahul Kaushik, 
officers of the Supreme Court Advocates on Record Association, learned senior advocates, members of the bar and officers of the registry, good evening. I stand here to express my gratitude and the gratitude of the entire legal fraternity to Justice Nazir for his remarkable career as a lawyer and as a judge. In more than one way, there is, this is a ceremony to commemorate more than just four decades of Justice Nazir's career of public service. It wouldn't be an exaggeration for me to say that Justice Nazir is not only dedicated to the law, but he is dedicated to all those who are affected by the law. It was a very long journey and not an easy step for him, born in Beluvai in Mudbidir Taluka in Karnatak, when Justice Nazir had to study law in the SDM Law College in Mangalore and later to be enrolled as an advocate in 1983. He's a farmer at heart. It was a difficult life for Brother Nazir growing up on his uncle's farms. And you'd be all very touched to know that at the Panambur beach in his early years, Justice Nazir even scavenged for fish which washed up on the shore and picked up that odd second or third fish. So it's been a long journey for Justice Nazir. After enrolling, he practiced for 20 years in the Karnatak High Court before he was appointed as an additional judge in May 2003 and served for 14 very illustrious years as a judge of the Karnataka High Court before he came to the Supreme Court in 2017. Justice Nazir once told me that he was worried about his future prospects after his graduation from law college in the 1980s. Growing up in very humble circumstances, Justice Nazir had to overcome many social and economic obstacles to make a mark for himself in the legal circles in Karnataka. He often attributes his success to the sacrifices which were made by his mother. Justice Nazir, it is a testament to your grit, determination, and courage that today you are taking leave as a judge of the highest court of the land. <laughs> to rephrase a popular adage, Justice Nazir has been here and he has done everything that a judge of the Supreme Court aspires to achieve. When he was elevated to the Supreme Court, Justice Nazir brought with him the valuable experience of judicial craftsmanship that he had gained while serving as a judge of the Karnataka High Court. His wisdom and experience are manifested through the equanimity with which he conducted his court, patiently at, interacted with counsel, fairly considered the merits of each argument, and courteously worked with his colleagues on the bench to find a just resolution to the disputes before him. In the Karnataka High Court, he was known as a judge who has specialized in the Code of Civil Procedure. He wrote many a judgment on cross-examination without really having cross-examined a witness in his early years at the bar. During his tenure, Justice Nazir has been a part of many landmark cases of the Supreme Court. He was part of the nine-judge bench in Puttaswamy versus Union of India, which unanimously held that the right to privacy is a fundamental right. He was a part of numerous constitution benches in important matters, including the five-judge bench pertaining to the Ayodhya title dispute and the constitutionality of the triple talaq. Recently, he also presided over the constitution benches dealing with the important issues of the validity of demonetization and the right to free speech of ministers, MPs, and MLAs. Justice Nazir has also contributed immensely to the jurisprudence in various other fields of law, such as administrative law, insurance, family law, land law, environmental law, and motor accident claims. His tenure as a judge of the Supreme Court shows that he was a leader, not only in his knowledge of the law, but also as a colleague who offered support and encouragement to others. Justice Nazir has always put the people at the center of his judicial philosophy. 
For example, I'll just give you two examples. In, in Vinayak House Building Cooperative versus the State of Karnataka in 2019, Justice Nazir, in an erudite judgment, observed that well-planned cities are a necessity for the health and well-being of the community. Similarly, in the case of Hospitality Association of Madhumalai, in 2020, Justice Nazir presciently observed the need to protect wildlife corridors as a way to ensure the survival of wildlife and the mitigation of the human-animal conflict. These two decisions are but an example of what a judge should always do. That is, to not only interpret a legal provision and lay down a rule, but to do substantive justice. For as Aristotle said, the challenge is to do, is the, challenge is to do the right thing to the right person, to the right extent, at the right time, with the right motive, and in the right way. I believe that throughout his career, Justice Nazir deftly overcame this challenge. Now I'll give you a few secrets about Justice Nazir. They have not been reported, but I can only assure you that they are not unreportable. In his college days, Justice Nazir was very fond of the theater. So he would compose the plays, write his dialogues, the songs, render the composition itself. And interestingly, he was the female lead singer himself in his own play. Even when he became a judge, he would join with his colleagues in an act of co-curricular singing. And he has been well known, both in the bar and the bench, for his Tulu songs. In one notable scene from a play which has been written and composed and directed by him, the very famous scene called the matchbox scene, which is that the villain in the play, a strip of the matchbox is stuck on the bald pate of the villain. And then Justice Nazir comes and lights a matchstick on his bald pate. Such was his creativity. Justice Nazir has learned Sanskrit, which shows his diversity and inclusion and openness of mind. He's simple to the core. Until recently, his only two identity cards were his driving license and the judge's ID. He acquired a passport for the first time in 2019. And in a recent visit over a cup of tea to my chamber, he told me that he was happy that he was able to obtain the first stamp of having traveled abroad by having traveled to Moscow a few weeks ago. It is known to some of us who are close to Justice Nazir that he writes a lot. He maintains a judge's diary in which on the first few pages, he has inspiring quotes. So wherever he reads something interesting, he will write it down in the first few pages of his judge's diary. And he's a subscriber of the WhatsApp University. <laughs> But he's truly simple to the core. It was only recently that Justice Nazir learned from his grandchild that magnets can also be toys. <laughs> In so many which ways, he is simplicity personified. His father-in-law discovered him way back in 1983, after he joined the bar and came to he actually came to Bangalore to be enrolled. He came to the High Court not knowing anyone at all. And he met somebody who was on a motorcycle with a beard and thought that he should go to that person and ask him for being recommended as a member of the Bar Council. So he turned to him and said, Khuda Hafiz. That person signed his enrollment form. Later, his brother funded his trip to Bangalore, his court, his enrollment fees. What is most interesting about all this 
is something which I hope Mrs. Samira Nazir will forgive me for sharing, which was the swayamvar which led to the beautiful union of such a gracious judge and his gracious spouse. <laughs> Having got to know his father-in-law, his father-in-law had picked up or picked out Justice Nazir as a prospective son-in-law. Justice Nazir was traveling by bus somewhere and his father-in-law was very keen that they must grab Justice Nazir at the right point of time. So when he returned on, by the bus, his father-in-law set a few of his very reliable uh, people, including juniors, to catch hold of Justice Nazir and make him ready for the swayamvar. So all in all, the smile which you see in the court reveals a multifaceted personality. It reveals a personality which has been very serious about the law, but much beyond as well. Fond of literature, fond of music. I think he, in that sense, represents a very complete human being. So today we are bidding farewell to a devoted son, a collegial colleague, a gentle employer, a fierce advocate, and a people's judge. Personally, I'm bidding farewell to a dear friend. When he sat with me in the court today, it was a great honor. But at the same time, I had a feeling of sadness as every minute went by because I knew that out of the two and a half hours that we had together today on the bench, every minute was one minute less from the time that we had together this morning. Farewells and goodbyes are a part of our lives, but this farewell does not eviscerate the greater memories that all of us have shared with Justice Nazir in the complex of the Supreme Court and beyond. <laughs> Justice Nazir, on behalf of the legal fraternity, I would like to thank you once again for your contributions to the Indian legal profession. I hope you will still remain attached to the legal profession and continue to enrich it in varied capacities. I would also like to thank and congratulate your gracious spouse, Samira ji, all the family members, including your son and Irfana, friends, staff, as well as the law clerks of Justice Nazir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Justice Nazir is a very simple man, and a very sim and he kept very things very simple in his court also, and, and kept the atmosphere very light and always had a smile on his face. And, but deep inside, a very hardworking person. In the last day, as Honorable CJ pointed out in chief court in the morning, he, he asked him whether he would like to have eight, 10 matters in court. He said, no, I'll sit till late. And he, the, he sat till 12.45 on the last working day of his court. That speaks a volumes about the man. With this, may I now request Honorable Mr. Justice S. Abdul Nazir, Judge Supreme Court of India, to kindly deliver his address. Honorable the Chief Justice of India, Dr. Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, Learned Attorney General for India, Sri R. Venkatramani, President of SCBA, Sri Vikas Singh, Vice President of SCBA, Sri Pradeep Kumar Rai, Honorary Secretary of SCBA, Sri Rahul Kaushik, my sister and brother judges, Learned Solicitor General of India, Sri Tushar Mehta, he has left. President, Secretary and members of the Supreme Court Advocates on Record Association, Mr. Ashok Bhushan, I was your bench partner, sir. <laughs> Mr. Venugopal Gowda, Justice Venugopal Gowda and Madam Venugopal Gowda. Learned senior advocates, my family members, and of course, law clerks, ladies and gentlemen. I am thankful to Honorable Chief Justice of India, Dr. Chandra Chut, for his kind words. So also to the Learned Attorney General for India. 
and Sh President of SCBA, Sri Vikas Singh, and the Vice President. Honorable Chief Justice of India had made a lot of research, but whatever he said was true. <laughs> After the great events, fond memories, and eternal relationships having at length happened in my personal and professional life, I now, at the time of my retirement, have the honor of expressing my heartful gratitude to everyone who had shown faith in my abilities and given me an opportunity to serve at this supreme institution. When I look back at how it all began, it still feels like a dream come true. When my career began, I was aged about 24 years. I was born in the year 1958. Vice President rightly said it was a 2020 match, but I have not played 2020 in my career. It was a regular test match like Sunil Gavaskar. <laughs> I have not gone for sixers and boundaries. I was born in the year 1958 when our country had completed a decade since its independence. I come from a very small village in Dakshina Kannada district of Karnataka state. I had completed my graduation in commerce and thereafter I was the first one in my family who decided to pursue a career in law. Mr. Vikas Singh is also right in stating that I was inspired by Sri M.K. Vijay Kumar. His speeches, political speeches, I, I was a great admirer of Vijay Kumar. I was lucky that I was able to enter his office as a junior. I still have vivid memories of the time I had spent at the SDM Law College at Mangalore. That was the, a time when litigation was the only option available, at least for me. One of my lecturers was telling me on that day, I remember in Kannada, I will say it in Kannada and then I will translate it in English. One of my lecturers about the law course in those days, 1983. No, I joined in 1979. Means anybody who won't fit in in this course, will not fit in anywhere. <laughs> that was the mentality in those days. Yellu salladavaru, illi sallaru. Anybody who won't fit in, will fit in here. But if anybody doesn't fit in here, won't fit in anywhere else. In 1983, I got myself enrolled at the bar. I still remember the initial tough years when English was still something I had to learn and to progress in my legal career. On a lighter note, my initial phase as a young advocate were synonymous with something known as duck syn syndrome. You all have seen ducks. Above the water, they seem to be like the most peaceful creatures on the planet silently gliding on the stream of water. But what's happening beneath? The water is only known to the ducks. They are paddling furiously just to stay afloat and keep gliding. I, had, I also had witnessed the feeling that I am not a smartest lawyer. I don't have the best drafting skills, etc., etc. But I kept pushing harder and harder just to peacefully glide in the legal profession and went on smiling also. <laughs> My two decades of practice at Karnataka were the most enriching years. That time was the first point of inflection in the history of the Supreme Court when our constitutional jurisprudence was being etched. 
and the credit must go to the then great judges of the Supreme Court and the sheer competence and exuberance of the legal stalwarts like Mr. Palkiwala, Mr. Sirwai, Mr. Fali S. Nariman, Mr. Parasaran, Mr. Jetmalani, Mr. Desai, Mr. Sorabji and many more. This too was an inflection point in my life. It was at that time I decided to completely dedicate my life to the legal profession. I started working even harder. I started enjoying my work more than ever. This all continued for good two decades before I was to face the next inflection point in my life, a major one, my elevation from the bar to the bench. It, actually, I should really thank Honorable Justice R. V. Ravindran for my elevation to the High Court. It was not an easy decision. A transition from the bar to the bench calls for a lot of self-introspection and self-talk. It was never an easy decision. Neither, I was, neither I, was I immune to it. In the year 2003, I was appointed as a judge at the Karnataka High Court. My life completely changed after that. As an advocate, I had been active in social affairs. I had made great friends during my years of practice. Tea and coffee were our catalyst for sparkling endless discussions and discreet learning outside the courtrooms. The pleasure of arguing before the judges and pressing hard to get relief for my clients was a great joy. Like it is said, great things call for greater sacrifices. And the next milestone came in the year 2017 when I was elevated to the Supreme Court. Here I must really remember Honorable Chief Justice Keher Saab. I know that such a prestigious position would come with greater responsibilities and duties. I had a span of good long six years, one month short of course, working alongside the finest brother and sister judges. Since I was fortunate to serve this institution, I had the privilege to work on many historic cases and landmark judgments. God has been very kind that he planned things in my life that I could barely envy when I was in my law school. The journey had been long and extremely challenging if, my, if I may humbly accept. Now since I have retired, I must also share my inner feelings that I rarely share with anyone. I have lived it all and I couldn't have asked Almighty for more, for anything more. I am extremely fortunate to contribute to the cause of justice and work with most distinguished judges at the Supreme Court. Hans Rowling in his book titled Factfulness explained why majority people assume the state of affairs wrongly. This is primarily not because of mere chance, but misinformation that exists in the society. The situation we see today is not as grim as it used to be earlier. The Supreme Court has always strived for excellence and I, um, I humbly acknowledge that it has come a long way ever since its inception. I am certain that under the guidance of the current Honorable Chief Justice, Dr. Chief Justice Dr. Chandrachud, this apex institution is all set to face the challenges of today's dynamic scenario. And I am also hopeful that our future Chief Justices and judges will only things, only take things forward. <laughs> I pointed out Honorable Justice Gawai because he's the he is going to be the Chief Justice of India. And Justice Sanjeev Khanna is here. Na, Justice Nagaratna is here. Huh? Oh, Justice Narsima is here. Sorry, sir, I missed. Huh? Where, where, kaha hai Vikram Nath ji? Oh, ho, ho. Aap shawl dal ke hai. Sorry. Topi aur shawl mein mai... Yeah. 
but like it is said, there is always room for improvements and changes. For instance, if I were to say that Indian judiciary is immune from gender inequalities that exist within our society, I can't be further away from, rea from the reality. Sir, the representation of women in judiciary is still very low. Kofi Annan rightly puts it, and I quote, there is no tool for development more effective than women em empowerment, unquote. I am lending words of my learned brother, Justice Ravindra Bhatt, who wrote his, in his recent judgment, Maratha Reservation. I, and I quote, the quest for one person, one value of true equality and of fraternity of Indians, where caste, race, gender, and religion are irrelevant has produced mixed results. As long as there is no true equality of opportunity of access, and of the true worth of human beings. And as long as the world is broken into fragments by narrow domestic walls, the quest remains incomplete." Unquote. Therefore, to find a Goldilocks solution which works for the needs of our society, all the three organs of state should look viable solutions to build a conducive en environment such that we not only preach but also practice equality in all spheres of life. The energy and competence I see in the young members of the bar are unparalleled. The appearance of young advocates in my courtroom made me really happy and reminded me of the, my younger days. I strongly believe that the younger generation should, with utmost sincerity, integrity, compassion, and perseverance, take the baton and pursue their professional interests. I strongly advocate that every young professional should spend reasonable time working in courts to learn that craft of advocacy that is immensely helpful in life, irrespective of your final career choice. As younger generation, you should not let the past decide your future. As younger generation, you should not let the past decide your future. Always try to optimize things in the present and do what is best for, go for going forward. If at any point in your career you are faced with making a decision between an easier path and a more challenging path, always opt for more challenging path because even if you fail, you always learn something new. There may be instances where you will be faced with a situation when life will offer you once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for which you might have to make a sacrifice. I suggest, friends, you take the plunge and accept such an opportunity because you can always come back to the remaining things later. I wish exceedingly in the outset to guard myself and all the senior bar members from approaching this subject that I am going to discuss with any passion. I only request for your compassion and maturity without intending to take any one by surprise. I wish to deliberate on two important things, maybe a bit harsh. Firstly, is with respect to giving the junior members reasonable opportunities to brief and argue the matters wherever possible. All that the younger generation needs is a mentor to channelize their energies and an invisible helping hand. Every one of us have had mentors in this profession. Therefore, it also becomes our duty to act like one for the new generation. Second is most important. Secondly, the juniors must be paid decently, sir. These kids are learning to gauge the depth of this profession and navigating their way. We cannot afford to lose such good talent just because of the perception that litigation as a career option is not financially unviable. We have to, 
we have to be the change that we probably wanted during our days as junior advocate a decent pay to the juniors will only bring more talented and dynamic young members to the profession <laughs> i second with the thoughts of honorable chief justice dr chandrachud on the same issue you had also expressed some time back we need them and their inputs in providing equitable and accessible justice and reach the last voice crying for justice which otherwise cannot be heard i thank my sister and brother judges of this court who have been very kind to me throughout i am to thank the supreme court registry law officers all my court staff protocol staff medical staff library staff and office staff staff members for perfectly managing everything for me during all my years in the supreme court and all my law researchers who have immensely helped me to the best of their abilities i thank each one of them and i wish them the best for their future endeavors and last but not the least everything in my life have been possible have not have been possible without the support of my family there are reasons that kept me going they stood next to me during all times i thank all of them i wish to reverberate what maximilian robespierre said during the french revolution while calling everyone to listen the inner self he said and i quote let us be generous towards good compassionate with the unfortunate inexorable with the evil and just towards everyone unquote finally i end with a shloka that relate most with me धर्मे सर्व प्रतिष्ठा प्रतिष्ठम तस्मद धर्म पर वदंती धर्म एव हतो हंती धर्मो रक्षति रक्षिता इट मीन्स दैट एवरीथिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड इज फाउंडेड ऑन धर्म हेन्स धर्म इज द अल्टिमेट सुप्रीम धर्म डिस्ट्रॉयज दोज हू डिस्ट्रॉय इट and dharma protects those protects it thank you jai hind thank you sir you spoke from the heart your journey of 40 years in this profession 20 years as a lawyer more than 20 years as a lawyer and then 20 years as a judge is an inspiration that with sheer hard work even with humble beginnings you can reach greater heights in life appearing in court was well, always a pleasure the way you kept the court atmosphere always sir now i'll read out the message given by honorable mr justice s abdul nazir for the members of the bar at the outset i express my heartful gratitude to the scba and its learned members my journey as a supreme court judge couldn't have been as delightful and enriching as it has been without the support and strength of the bar i am grateful that i could be a part of this growing and close knit family that has stood together with the bench during all times like most of my distinguished colleagues and the predecessor judges of the supreme court i too commence my professional journey as a member of the bar i have witnessed the transition from the bar to the bench initially at the high court and later at the supreme court i was fortunate if i must say so as to contribute in both capacities my contribution is only a step towards our pursuit to achieve our ultimate goal to secure equal access to justice for all i wish to place on record my appreciation for the office bearers senior members and junior members of the scba who have all stood together and supported the bench even during the unprecedented covid period I emphatically believe that the proud legacy of the SCBA will be carried forward. Finally, I wish to thank each member of the SCBA. I hope that it continues to support the young members and future tor torch bearers of the bar with utmost generosity and compassion and continues to guide them in their professional endeavors. 
Thank you, sir, for such kind words for the members of the bar and such encouraging words for the members of the bar. May I now request Mr. Vikas Singh, President SCBA, and Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Vice President SCBA, to kindly present a memento on behalf of the bar to Honorable Mr. Justice Abdul S. Abdul Nazir, Judge Supreme Court. May I, may, I now, may I now request Mr. Rohit Pandey, Joint Secretary, SCBA, to kindly give a vote of thanks. Thank you, Rahul. Lord Sib, Abdul Najir, sir, for you. We can fly from the sky, from the sky, from the sky, from the sky, अंबर पर वही उड़ेंगे जिनके अपने पर होंगे सर आप उनमें से हैं सर यू आर ऑन द टॉप सर आपको हम सभी याद रखेंगे आप बहुत याद आएंगे वी आर ग्रेटफुल टू ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर जस्टिस डी वाई चंद्रचूड़ ऑनरेबल द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया फॉर एक्सेप्टिंग आर इन्विटेशन फॉर प्रिजाइडिंग द फंक्शन We thank Honorable Mr. Justice S. Abdul Nazir, the Supreme Court of India, and his family members for accepting our invitation to attend this function. We thank Honorable Judges of Supreme Court of India, Honorable Justice Ashok Bhushan sir, the Supreme, former Judge Supreme Court of India, for gracing the occasion. I thank Mr. R. Venkat Ramani, Learned Attorney General for India, Mr. Tushar Mehta sir, Learned Solicitor General of India, Learned Law Officers, Mr. P. H. Pari, former President of SCBA, Mr. K. C. Kausik, former Secretary of SCBA, Ms. Priya Hingurani, former Vice President of SCBA, Mr. Vikrant Yadav, uh, Secretary, uh, Secretary of SCBA, Mr. Manoj Misra, President of SCORA, Mr. Sanasid Mukherjee, Vice President of SCORA, Mr. Devabrath, Secretary of SCORA, Mr. Sanjeev Kalgaonkar, Learned Secretary General, Mr. Rakesh Kumar, Mr. Atul Kurekar, Mr. Uh, Mahesh Patnankar, Colonel Marwa and other registrars of the Supreme Court of India and Mr. Ajit Mamgai and staff of Supreme Court Bar Association, press, journalists, print, electronic media, office bearers and members of the executive committee of different bar associations and other distinguished guests and respected members of the bar for gracing the occasion. I request the members of the executive committee for joining for the group, uh, group photographs. Just to clarify that learning solution, it was just a small issue is all fine. Huh?